Welcome back, guys. It's AP at night, which is just AP Games, but it, it's at night. Um, so I wanted to go over a lot of stuff because I didn't really have a video plan for this. So I'm just going to kind of use this as an opportunity to talk about some interesting things regarding what's coming to the game uh, in the near future that I've been hearing around the internets and stuff like that. So let's lay some groundwork really quickly. Obviously, the, the big elephant in the room right now is the Ray over Jabba farm, which is stupid. But... You know, I, I, I've, I've kind of justified that to myself, so we're not going to talk too much about that. But I, what I did want to talk about is way, way back when we had the Ben Swolo leak. Uh, I believe it was Reddit or fucking Discord or someone someone somewhere did something. And then, of course, every single YouTuber is uh, just like AP Gaines, you know, hopping on the old bandwagon and give that bandwagon a ride. So, you know, we're unoriginal in that sense. Um. But way back when we had the Ben Swolo leak, it was on the tales of also there being an SLKR lifter. Um, now, of course, not all leaks are 100% accurate. We still haven't gotten the Ravenger from way back when Omicrons were first announced. <laughs> and there was that Qui-Gon Omicron that was kind of that first one to hit. Uh, and, you know, the, the nerf, not the, not the nerfs, the nerfs were leaked, but those happened. Uh, it's 7. mods and all this other shit, right? Some of it just has yet to come to fruition. So I kind of wanted to talk, start there. Uh, we're going to talk about a number of things because I'm just going to kind of speed run my GAC because I did the, the classic fleet only defense. So as long as I full clear, we have a hundred percent chance to win, which is fun, especially because I'm super busy with work and stuff like that. And I only really have time to play about one out of every nine GACs at this point. Um, don't even have time to stream anymore, which is kind of sad, but going back to SLKR, um, it would be, I mean, obviously, it would be spectacular for the character, for the team, for just how everyone's account is built up if SLKR were to get a lifter. Because right now, he's not sitting as one of the better Galactic Legends. Um, not that he's bad, uh, but he's he doesn't stand out. In a world where Galactic Legends are starting to stand out more and more, he seems to kind of... I don't know, fall by the wayside. Um, not that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I appreciate his, uh, how do you call it, less than uh, stellar amazingness. You know, I'm I'm just going to throw in shit. Normally I pull out Jedi Knight Luke for this kind of thing, but I don't know, for the purposes of the stream, I don't have the 1% chance that I have of losing that without Jedi Knight Luke. I don't want to look like an idiot and just have to throw away this footage. Um, but yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't really differentiate himself oftentimes which is not the worst thing in the world but it's also a little sad and i am of the belief that he will eventually get this this ray palpatine lifter that he was promised um and obviously he's the most popular galactic legend he was you know tied with ray as the first yeah i don't know why i brought in jedi luke that was an absolutely unimaginable waste of resources <laughs> but whatever um but yeah, I mean, once he gets, I mean, whatever Ray Palpatine does, or maybe they've decided that it's something else. Obviously, it's not going to be Snoke. I think that would be stupid. Um, I, I I don't know, obviously, what she would do. But just an increase in viability would kind of pull him back in line with everyone else. If we go over all of the Galactic Legends really quickly and what they're all good at and stuff like that, I mean, I don't know. We'll just go in chronological order. Ray, Ray was the worst by far for a long time. Cal Kestis and um and Ben Swolo have kind of brought her up. She has the flexibility of you can unlimited theory crafting. I feel like every time there's a new team that no one knows how to beat, there's always some Ray lineup that will work. Uh we talked about it in a video, I think it was the other day or just whenever the hell it happened to be. Um there is the there is always a good likelihood that she'll be in some kind of rotation as far as datacrons are concerned, which is helpful. Uh, I myself don't really use Datacrons, but you know there is that possibility that you know she could she could catch a <laughs> she could catch a, a Datacron cycle here and there and and kind of be in a better spot. Uh, SLKR, like we talked, we already talked about him. Uh, JML is, I mean, JML's always been really good. Uh, he's a fantastic. Uh, he's part of the best like three rotation uh, farm in the game at the moment. Um, that Jedi Knight Luke, JML, Profundity, kind of Star Killer, however you want to tackle those three, um, is currently the best like three bang rotation in the game right now. So he has that going for him. C has always kind of been the worst Galactic Legend, um, but he, you know, he has some offensive viability. Obviously, he's fantastic on offense, and 
uh, provides a lot of lower GP players that ability to to beat a backbone team, right? To beat a Malgus or you know a fucking whatever it might be, a Gas or a- anything that can give you know a new player trouble. It's nice to just have one character that you know can beat that. Now, obviously, that's not what you want out of your Galactic Legends because Galactic Legends are generally much more valuable on defense, assuming that they can't be countered one off by something super easy. Um, you know, back when back when C was just getting absolutely romple stomped. I'm recording, right? Okay, good. Back when C was getting absolutely romple stomped by the likes of you know uh, Wampa solos and shit like that. Like, obviously not good. So there is that that maybe it's SLKR that gets the next lifter. Maybe it's C that gets the nef- next lifter. You know what I mean? Um, these conquest characters have historically had a couple of lifters, but also historically have been characters that give a big boost, right? So I'm just the thing is like trench is I don't know how to say this politely like obviously we did the the Reva testing with Van Seal and stuff like that and Van Seal fucking loves trench I'm just gonna tell you right now that man is fucking trench obsessed at the moment um, he is absolutely loving trench but he also has the the full team that trench would be used in uh, at R9 and he loves territory wars and all of that jazz and stuff like that so. You know, there's a little bit of bias there, but I personally don't believe that Trench is super spectacular. Now, you guys might have a differing opinion, and that's totally fine. I don't particularly care one way or the other on if you like Trench or not. Uh, I kind of put him in the same camp as Book of Boba Fett, uh, fucking Fat Boba or whatever he's called, uh, Skeen of Yango, where, you know, it's nice to ha- it's nice to know that the Territory War players are kind of, you know, they're being taken care of. Like, there is an opportunity for people who mostly care about territory wars to have something in territory wars that you know can work for them i'm not a huge territory war fan myself um i never really have been i do one of two things i go all in on offense or all in on defense well i guess one of three things (laughs) i go all in on offense i go all in on defense or i do absolutely nothing um it's it's uh you know it's usually it's usually one of those things uh it's generally the 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 ladder ladder it's generally that do absolutely nothing and you know that's a credit to my guild and their fortitude to not kick me when they probably should definitely bringing them down not in not only in terms of clout am i bringing them down because i'm not really adding anything to the to the gang um is this gonna work they're gonna stun no that's probably not gonna work let's just use small whatever Sometimes I forget that I, when I save everything for offense, I just have so many fucking teams that I just don't scroll down far enough to see all of the teams that I have access to, uh, which is a little annoying sometimes because there's just so many teams on this account. Uh, what was I saying? I don't even remember my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't particularly think that Trench is that good, which means I anticipate the next Conquest character uh, to be steezed out of its fucking mind. Uh, excuse my language, but not really, because I don't really care, and I can say all the bad words I want. There's nothing you can do to stop me. Um, that being said, YouTube is doing something to stop me, trying to take away my ad revenue. If you want to support me, link in the description to the Patreon. Get some roster reviews, but also, more importantly, help AP Gains feed, house, and clothe himself. Very helpful, very helpful. Back to the rambling for the next 45 minutes. I think the next Conquest character is going to be steezed out of its mind. Now, there's always going to be the fucking Red 5 people, and, you know, maybe one day, uh, just like we had one day, one day, one day, we were going to get all of these amazing characters uh, that never came to the game, but then somehow did come to the game, like your uh, your Jedi Knight Lukes and stuff like that. <sighs> I don't know. Man, I'm getting absolutely fucking beat down. I'm getting absolutely beat down by this, this Jedi Knight Revan. I forgot. This would be a great... And by great, I mean this would be an absolutely fantastic time to mention that Jedi Knight Luke in 3v3 has the number one hold rate in all of uh, all of Grand Arena. So, totally forgot about that. Well, I guess you got to see one failure and, you know, more to come. But that's the great thing about the fleet-only defense is, you know, assuming you're not acting like AP Gains, who does this all the time because I only play one out of every one GAC a month because <laughs> I'm just so busy. Um, you know, assuming you're playing more than one GAC a month, um. All right, who do I want to use? There's got to be some good down here. Assuming you're playing more than one GAC a month, um, it just gives you that flexibility to where I could I could literally drop seventy battles and I would still win, which is kind of the fun part about this strategy. 
Um, who do I? What cleans? I should probably not uh, lowball this uh, this Jedi Knight Revan team because it's probably going to be annoying. You know what? Oh, this is such a waste, but I don't really care at this point. I still have a million other teams that I could use. Funny thing is, there's probably going to be like that one very specific team that requires. It's probably going to be like Star Killer. I do you know what I mean? There's going to be a fucking Star Killer uh, on the back wall, and I'm going to need my General Grievous to beat it, which is you know probably. I just realized that Jedi Knight Revan can't. Oh, I guess he can revive himself. I was. I don't know why. I had like a, a small inkling of hope that Jedi Knight Revan couldn't revive himself. I don't know. I'm an idiot, I guess. Um, yeah, so I, I think the next character is going to be some sort of lifter unit. Um, I, I, I have always, in my mind, when looking at the Conquest timetable, have imagined it's going to be the Ray Palpatine that SOKR is going to get. Uh, is there? Am I leaving the door open for the Sea Lifter? Yeah, of course. I I leave, you know, my house is literally just only open doors because there's just no door that I don't leave open. Um it just doesn't I don't know. Does it it just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? A C lifter right now just does not feel correct. I don't know why. I can't I cannot for the life of me. Will this be fast slash punchy enough? They're gonna, uh, you know, it's probably not gonna work. I'm just gonna rock the classic, uh, the classic schm lineup that I always use against this team. A little bit of overkill, but whatever. Um, I just don't really see. I don't really. <laughs> I don't really see C being the one to get a lifter right now. And you know, I, you know, maybe that's my fault for not for having lack of foresight. Um, but it just doesn't feel right at the moment. I don't feel like that's the direction the game's going in, and maybe I'm wrong. Um, I just think... I think that's... Okay, I'm fucking rambling here. I think CG might be a tad reactionary. I think, for balancing purposes, whatever comes next, like the big thing that comes next, not like the next Conquest character, but the big thing that comes next... Um, is going to be the next Galactic Legend. And the next Galactic Legend is going to need to counter Reva. And I don't know if they planned on it countering Reva. Um, there's a great uh, there's a great conspiracy theory that I'll talk about here in a couple of minutes you guys will get in a hoot and a holler out of. Um, but I, I, I don't think that it... <laughs> All right, we're just going into full-on conspiracy mode here. We're, we're, we're getting in the deep end. We're leaking shit. I mean... Not that I have anything to leak, but like we're just going to talk about all of the fucking dirty laundry. I believe that it is the case that one of two things happened. And you can decide which is more likely. The first is that CG purposely made Reva ridiculously broken as a payback because we all made fun of them for the Inquisitors. Conspiracy number one. Conspiracy number two is that... It's just broken because they're incompetent, and they, it just happens to be fucking ridiculous. No Galactic Legends. Let me just make sure there's no Galactic Legends back here. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, and I don't want to say that it's entirely incompetence because I am of the belief that neither of those is the case, if we're being completely intellectually honest with ourselves. I believe that realistically what happened is... It's the most exclusive character that there is. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's fucking hard to get. Uh, armor and health, sure. And so they want it to be very powerful. Potentially on the level of Galactic Legends in Grand Arena. I think they probably underestimated how good it was going to be. In that it might be better without the uh, Omicrons and Datacrons than they would have originally predicted. <laughs> Um, but that's not necessarily to say that it's complete and total incompetence on their end as to just how fucking strong it is, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the most exclusive character, I think, that we've ever had. And I don't think that it's close. I, I've had some people try to argue with me that it's not the most exclusive, and they're like, oh, the first Galactic Legend, or blah, blah, blah. No. The the true and utter requirements to Reva are as follows. You have to have... Not only the Inquisitors farmed five marquee characters, who are now slowly becoming accelerated rate because they've been out for a year, which is awesome. Big fan of that. 
you not only have to have all five Inquisitors, you have to have them at R5 to unlock Grand Inquisitor. Then you have to have them all at R7. I believe it's R7 is the minimum. And then you have to be able to do the Reva mission. And then by doing the Reva mission, you can get into a guild that can do the Reva mission, right? In most cases, as far as cam shards or watch shards are concerned, that's kind of where the ball stopped, right? There was this, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but AP gains always happens to be hindsight, foresight, hindsight. Um, that, that just doesn't cut it anymore because now the entire TB3 is GP-based, right? You have to not only have those criteria met, which are very hard criteria to meet, you have to also have either spent enough money or have been playing for enough years to where you have seven, six to seven to eight million galactic power to where you're going to be able to deploy that galactic power in those territory battles. But not only that, or in territory battles, but not only that, those types of guilds also care very much about territory wars. You have to have enough teams and potentially investment in data crons and omicrons and territory war to be able for that guild to bring you in. But then not only that, <sighs> you also probably have to have some specific teams for TB3. So by far the highest, and you have to spend time, holy shit, do you have to spend time waiting months and months and months for the characters to get it? And it's, it's a pain. Okay. Rambling about how hard it is to get Reva concluded moral of the story very hard very hard indeed to get he he ha ha very funny um yeah so the mo the, the fucking most broken character that we've had in a very long time the most hard to get character that we've had in a very long time i'm probably gonna lose this battle <sighs> why is my gas so slow i feel like you know this is a separate problem that maybe we'll discuss later um I mod my characters once and then almost never remod them unless they're requirements of some sort of, uh, <laughs> unless they're requirements for some sort of, how do you call it, uh, event. Uh, oh, wow, this is super hot. Um, so I think I modded my gas back in 2021, early 2021, I think. Yeah, maybe late 2020, or early 2021, I modded my gas, and I don't think I've touched him ever since. So I always bring my gas into battles, and I'm like, ooh, 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 that's not good. Um, but yeah, Reva, Reva's fucking busted. Um, ships. Ships are in a fun place right now. Uh, lots and lots of people are talking about how busted the Empire Fleet is and the fact that we're either going to get Red 5 or we're going to get Trench's capital ship or... We're going to get Nihilus' capital ship, or we're going to get some other random nonsense. I am of the opinion, and I've said that a million times today because I guess I just have so many fucking opinions. Um, I am of the opinion. What am I of the opinion of? This is like turning into a one-man podcast. I like legitimately was just like, I'm just going to do my GAC and talk, and I normally don't string together coherent sentences this long. Um which explains my streams where, like, ADHD gains just, like, half the time I'm just, like, fucking playing Tacticus on my phone, I guess. Um, I am of the opinion that I will create the opinion that I am of at this very moment. I don't know. I think... I think we likely... Okay. I'm going to hedge my bets. Obviously, working in finance, I have to hedge everything because I cannot be legally liable for anything I say without properly qualifying the fact that I'm going to hedge so that I have no go no legal... <laughs> I have no, no possible way where my words can be used against me. If this doesn't happen, and by this I mean Red 5 is the next Conquest character or fucking whatever, right? Unless... Unless we get Red 5 for the 40th anniversary with Endor Leia or whatever they decide to do, I believe that we're going... Oh, God. Oh, I think it's going to be Nihilus. I think it's going to be Nihilus. And here's why I think it's going to be Nihilus. Unlike my constituents in the Galaxy of Heroes community, I think that... Meatface has the same problem that a lot of my friends who play other games have. 
and let me outline this for you. I have friends, obviously, I've been a YouTuber for long enough, I have a bunch of YouTuber friends. You know, big whoop, I'm so cool, right, guys? Yeah, it's so awesome to be me. I have friends who do, like, you know, they're, they're kind of like the beta program, right? They're still beta testers for Galaxy of Heroes. They're not the public ones. Everyone kind of knows who they are. Um, but they're still there, right? Back in the many cycles that the beta program for this game was around, there was always leaks, like the fucking Omicron, like huge update leak and just everything, right? I think Meat Face suffers from I know too much syndrome in that he just occasionally wants to slip some stuff out here. And by that, I mean, I believe... I believe that the stupid shit that he says occasionally has some merit to it. I believe that when he says these dumb things that everyone makes fun of him for, and a lot of other YouTubers are like, you can't say that, your words have meaning. I think he knows his words have meaning, and he just has that insatiable itch to be like, haha, look at me, I know more than you. Um, it's something that I do. It's something that most people do because it's hard to know these things and not want to talk about them because it's just so cool. It's so awesome. It's so wild. It's so funky. It's so fresh to know these things. Um, so when he makes these memes about Red 5, I think they seriously probably at some point will bring out a Red 5 and he's just kind of going to be like, oh, look, I kind of teased it a little bit. That not that cool? Um, I think that when he says farm your Sith ships and then immediately deletes it, I... <laughs> I think that potentially we might need to farm our Sith ships, you know what I mean? I think that might be something that they're thinking about, something that could come to the game. Not necessarily it's going to be the next thing that comes to the game, obviously, but I think that it could be something that does come to the game. Um, do I think that it is more likely that... Do I think it's more likely that we get a Sith capital ship than a Trench capital ship? I want to say yes, because I think... They have space to do stuff in that area. I don't think they have the momentum as far as the Disney IP is concerned to go after separatist stuff too much. Um, I think with Inquisitors being big and then the Ahsoka Ezra show coming out, there's probably going to be some like deep Sith lore that's talked about there. I just think it generally tends to lean more towards that being the place where there's going to be some momentum. The Sith is obviously way more specific than Trench, right? Whether that's, you know, a nihilist capital ship or it's just a generalized Sith fleet, whatever it may be. Right. Oh, I just fucking burped. Well, I guess if you're 23 minutes and two seconds in, uh, I don't know, what do you say? Gazuntite, bless you. Uh, doth, doth be pray. What's that thing they say in Skyrim? just just say in chat if you if you were here at 23 minutes and two seconds hear me burp um but rambling continued i just think it makes the most mathematical sense that there's going to be some sort of sith push here whether we get a new sith character or whatever blah 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 and for the naysayers who are like oh trench makes the most sense he's the conquest character and blah 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 i think i think that was kind of a layup um my boss always says layup shot. He's from the Midwest. And apparently they call it a layup shot out there, which is weird, but whatever. Um, I think Trench is a character where they already had a maid. They already had a kit done, and they kind of just needed something to plug in. They probably, you know, just didn't really have anything cooking on the books. And they were like, what should we do? Let's just throw in a character that we already have a kit made for. Give him some Omicrons to make him good in Territory Wars, a game mode that we know people care about, but not super super care about if you know what i mean um and just kind of see what we can do right i think that was kind of just like a it was like a flex seal you know what i mean they just spray the flex seal uh and it plugs a you know it stops the the flooding stops the leak uh for a little bit until they can come up with a better solution i think that was kind of the idea if i had to take a wild guess um I would say it's probably that. I would say that it probably filled an immediate need, and that immediate need was, yo, we got to fucking have some Conquest character, and we're still working on whatever it is that's going to be the big Conquest character that we haven't finished working on yet. 
let's hedge our let's not hedge our bets let's just take an ex, some extra time to iron out this kit problem that we've been experiencing and throw in something in the interim that people will maybe get excited about and i think that's kind of led to some speculation but i i definitely do not think that trench is going to be the next capital ship i think having a conquest character and then immediately dropping a, a capital ship for said conquest character is kind of a little random um not that you know it's impossible uh please tell me that they place the executor on defense oh interesting okay well i guess we lost this because he can probably beat my executor with his executor actually his executor is weaker than mine i don't think he beats it but he probably two shots so whatever i don't really care like i said i don't really play my grand arenas anymore uh I just don't have time. As I said, it's what fucking 15 minutes to midnight right now, and I gotta get up in four and a half hours to get ready for work. So, not exactly an optimal, optimal opportunities for me to do all my grand arenas. Um, I am, however, going to make a pledge to you and to myself to actually play grand arena over the summer. Um, the summer is going to be extra busy as far as work is concerned, but I just, you know. I just want to kind of get back into the flow of things. I feel like I've been out of the YouTube game. Um, and I just kind of want to jump. What team am I fighting right now? Let me actually double check that. I just want to I just want to get back out there. You know what I mean? I just want to get back into the swing of things. And I want to do Grand Arena. And I haven't really done Grand Arena for a couple of months. And I just I just feel like the summer is going to be a good time for me. When the sun's out, I'm a, I hate the doom and gloom. Uh, I spend too much time in San Francisco. And it's always fucking gloomy out there. Um... I just, uh, you know, I just want the sun. I want the, the sensation, the, the fantastic, the fantissimo of the sun is going to bring back Grand Arena into my life. But what was I saying? I just don't think that Trench makes the most sense. I feel like they've had other better opportunities to boost up the uh, Separatists. Uh, I remember when the Bad Batch were first coming out, I was, I was a big herald for, you know, you need a separate Separatist capital ship. I, I quoted... I was quoted as saying trench, so maybe I make myself look like an idiot here by denying the stuff that I was preaching years ago. Um, but I said we need a second separatist capital ship, so we can have two, you know, two separatist fleets, and then we need like the Marauder has to be like a, I guess what what the uh, what the Outrider ended up being. Like there has to be a really good ship that makes this capital ship either Mace or uh, Kenobi really good, and then the rest of them go here. So we have two Galactic Republic ships and two separate ships, and we can boost up the total number of zones for ships, or just allow players of different rosters to have an opportunity to have, um, you know, better ships, right? Because obviously the Negotiator is way better than Malevolence. And obviously, the you know, the S-tier ships are fantastic, and the Empire ship has kind of become the fucking king of the world at the moment. It's, I don't think there's been something that I've enjoyed more personally in a very long time than the... Uh, I always, always, always go into my GAC battles with Afro without equipping the Datacron, and it always pisses me off. I don't think there's been anything that I've enjoyed more in the last year in this game than the Empire fleet. Rocking the, uh, <laughs> rocking the, uh, whatchamacallit, um, the Interceptor at, like, level one, just to have it there, and now rocking the, uh, the Defender, and then just having that, that turn one reinforcement and getting the Annihilate off, or occasionally using, you know, fucking Tarkin when I forget that I accidentally put, a um, Thrawn with my Finalizer fleet, which happens more than, than you would think. Um, I've just really been enjoying that fleet. So, yeah, that, that was kind of my original hypothesis back in... Am I reducing turn meter? Or am I just getting a bunch of turn meter? Okay, I was not reducing turn meter. I was just getting a bunch of turn meter. Man, that is... What a crazy ability. This team is fucking ridiculous. I don't even have the Omicrons on them. Um, okay, let's just power through all this stuff. What beats Qui-Gon? Uh, fuck it. I don't know. Should I just kill Qui-Gon and then have them kill me and then come back and whatever? I'm just going to kill Qui-Gon, get fucking nuked, and then come back and two-shot this. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, man. <sighs> um, but yeah. <sighs> what are you guys up to? I guess is the, the real question here. 
I feel like I got to get back out in the trenches. I got to talk to more people. I obviously have a big list of people that I talk to and get their thoughts on the game and stuff like that, which is why I am so opinionated because I just talk to too many damn people about too many things. But I guess I'm going to use this up and off as an opportunity. We're 30 minutes in. I would say maybe 4% of you guys who clicked on the video are still watching, so shout out to you guys. What's what's on your mind? I mean, I'm probably not going to be able to reply to these comments because I am so unimaginably busy. But what I can do and what I will do is read them. I do surprise to many people read my comments. Um, I just kind of have an issue with... Um, I just kind of have an issue with replying to them because a lot of you guys leave really long comments and I kind of make a mental note of them, but like I can't reply to paragraphs at a time when there's like, you know, 50 to 100 comments on a video that's particularly divisive like this one might be. Um, so I will read them. I probably won't respond to them, but I will likely, and what I usually do and what you guys will notice is if you guys go to my streams, I usually respond to the comments i'll like mark them down mentally or i'll just like make a note of them and then I, those are usually the topics that i talk about when i stream and stuff like that so if you guys are wondering whether or not i'm, I'm hearing the voice of the people because i've been kind of dormant in the comment section it's kind of like the same thing that most most people do is <laughs> i'm uh I, i'm taking note and i am returning at a later point uh to address them in a more advantageous forum for myself. And that more advantageous forum just happens to be um, streaming, where I can just talk and talk and talk. And the reason I've always kind of been better at streaming than um, doing YouTube videos, like super long form like this, is just, I don't know. I need like a prompt. Like you guys are noticing at this point that I can't really talk for a very long period of time without any uh, outside input. I can't just... I'm not a ranter. I'm not like a one-man podcaster. I can't just talk and talk and talk. I can hold a conversation. Like if someone else is here, we could talk for hours and it would be fine. And there's plenty of things that I love to talk about that I do talk about with people for hours and hours and hours. Um, but it's just always been easier for me to kind of have that constant like chat feedback. Because like how many times have I in the course of this whatever however long this has been how long have i like said half of a thought and then gone on to something completely different <laughs> and then immediately uh switch topics and then gone back and just kind of been all over the place like it's just easier for me to have those people there not to hold me accountable but just to steer me in the right direction like usually i'll just like i'll say something stupid and people are just like adhd gains and they're just like like you gotta fucking pay attention my friend excuse me and it kind of steers me back in, in line, which is uh, definitely helpful because I can I can get a little rambunctious. All right, so normally I use Thrawn, but I, I've been enjoying Tarkin a little bit. I feel like I w if I had the Scythe, well, if I had the Scythe, I'd be running two Empire fleets. I'm not going to kid myself there. If I had the Scythe, I would, well, I'm not going to have the Scythe, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'd probably run two Empire Fleets. I'm kind of liking Moth Eater. Like, I like Thrawn's viability. You get the heal. I can call I can call the assist. Normally what I do is I call the assist from my TIE pilot, which is weird because I think if Vader crits, he does more damage, but then the defender does a fuck ton of damage. Like, this defender is weak. Like, ridiculously weak. But it does comparable damage. That Like, if, if my TIE defender was seven stars... Well, he's fucking dead now. Thanks for the assists, guys. I really appreciate that. If he was seven stars and more than, like, gear four, or actually, my, I think it's gear one. No, it's my Iden. So my Iden is gear eight, something like that. I think it's three stars gear eight, if I'm not mistaken. Man, this is actually, this is actually not good. They're actually doing me in here. They're getting a little rambunctious. Um, I think I just wasn't expecting the TIE Defender to die so quickly. But I guess it taunts. And this is a team that really likes stuff that taunts. So I guess maybe that's my fault. Um, 
but yeah, I just I just enjoy calling the tie to assist because it just does so much damage. But I, I'm kind of leaning towards Tarkin, but obviously Tarkin is not exactly not exactly performing particularly well for me here. Um, which is going to be something that I'm going to need to address at a later date. Now, obviously, both my Thrawn and my Tarkin are seven stars gear eight without mods or ability material, so they're particularly slow, which is a problem in and of itself. Um, but I don't know, like, what's the point at which I fully commit to that fleet? Because I love that fleet. The thing is, like, it, it beats what I need it to beat. It beats what I need it to beat. And so I'm just, I've always been a value guy. Like, when I get to a point where I don't need to, like, I have a team that can beat stuff, and it can beat that stuff, and I don't need to upgrade it to, to beat the same stuff, I just kind of leave it. Like, you look through my teams, like, I don't, like, some teams I just leave at low gear because they just do what they need to do. You know what I mean? Like, that goes back to the to the fucking rant I went on about uh, well, why you're wasting so many relics and shit like that. It's just, like, you, a lot of times you just, don't need to do the things you're doing like you don't need to upgrade the things you're upgrading like if it doesn't add a new counter it doesn't matter now obviously if if the empire fleet was a team that was good on defense i would relic them like i only really relic stuff that i put on defense to be honest with you both in ships and in gac i guess not ships because i don't really put anything on defense because i don't really place a defense um i haven't placed a defense in three months except for ships um is that the most effective strategy? Obviously, it's not the most effective strategy for 100% of cases because a lot of times my opponents have the Profundity and the Executor and all of the all the Get Two Fleets and the Finalizer and the Radis and you know two or three million more GP than me, um, and there's no way that works. But I'm just so lazy that it doesn't really matter. But yeah, Ray Farm. Um, I don't know, man. I'm excited. I I don't know. I haven't. I haven't really been excited about this game in a while. I feel, I don't know, I feel like something's brewing. I don't know what's going on. I feel surprisingly optimistic, which is uncommon, if I'm going to be 100% honest with you. It's very uncommon for me to be optimistic about this game, but I just am for some reason. I don't know why. I just feel it. I feel it in my bones that, you know, there's going to be some. I don't know. Did reset not happen? Oh, daylight savings. My reset's in five minutes. Okay, whatever. As always, I love you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.